Hi, my name is Jennifer. I'm here with my client, Tag, to demonstrate a visual perceptual assessment used in occupational therapy practice. Today, Tag and I will demonstrate the test of visual perceptual skills, also known as the TVPS3. These materials that are included in the, um, the assessment include the examiner's manual, the test booklet, and then the scoring sheet. This assessment is intended to measure the various aspects of visual perceptual ability in children between the ages of 4 and 18. So what is visual perception? Visual perception is defined as the process by which meaning is attached to visual stimuli. In other words, visual perceptual skills help us to make sense of what we see. In total, there are seven subtests in this assessment that start with basic visual perceptual skills and end with more difficult tasks. So let's go over the seven subtests. Subtest one assesses visual discrimination, which is the ability to discriminate between details of objects such as position, shape, form, and color. For this test, the child is shown a design and then asked to point to the matching design from among several choices. In subtest two, visual memory is described as the ability to recognize one stimulus item after a brief interval. So for this test, the child is shown a design for five seconds then asked to choose the same design from several choices. Subtest three assesses spatial relationships or the ability to perceive the positions of objects in relation to oneself or other objects. For this test, the child is shown a series of designs on a page and then asked to choose the one that is different from the rest. In subtest four, we're assessing form constancy, which is the ability to recognize that a shape or object stays the same when it changes size, position, or environment. During this subtest, the child is asked to find one design among others on the page, and the design could be smaller, larger, or rotated. In subtest five, uh, we're assessing sequential memory, or the ability to remember and recall a sequence of objects or events in the correct order. For this test, the child is shown design sequences for five seconds and then asked to choose the matching design from among several choices. For subtest six, visual figure ground, uh, we're looking at the ability to identify an object from a complex background or surrounding objects. <laughs> During this test, the child is asked to find one design among many within a complex background. And in subtest seven, visual closure, we're looking at the ability to identify a whole figure when only fragments of that figure are presented. During this test, the child is asked to match a completed design to one of the incomplete patterns shown on the page. In total, this assessment should take approximately 30 minutes to complete all seven subtests. Some general considerations before you get started. You should know that each subtest starts with two example items that are recorded but not scored. The example items are followed by 16 test items of increased difficulty. The administrator may repeat the instructions during the test. However, further teaching of the task is not allowed beyond the example items. You can encourage the child to respond even if it is a guess. The test manual provides directions in bold font that should be read verbatim because this is a standardized test. When scoring on the sheet, uh, each correct answer is scored as one point and the errors are recorded as a zero. You are to administer all test items unless the child incorrectly answers three consecutive questions. If this happens, you should go on directly to the next subtest. So Tag and I are going to demonstrate two of the subtests, visual discrimination and visual memory. So Tag, today you'll see some designs and we'll be asked a question about each one. You'll choose one of the answer choices shown on the page. Each answer choice at the bottom of the page is marked with a number. Just point to the design that you choose your answer or say the number underneath it. Work as quickly as you can. Each question has only one answer. So if you do not know the answer, it is okay to guess. So first we'll practice. Look at this first example. At the top of the page, you'll see a design. See it here? Okay. Which of the designs below is exactly like the one at the top? Uh, number three. Okay, good. All right, let's do another one. Look at this one at the top. 
you see a design. Which of the designs below looks exactly like the one at the top? Five. Good. Okay. Look at this one at the top. Which of the designs below look exactly like the one at the top? Three. Okay. Okay. Look at this design at the top. Which one below looks exactly like it? Two. Okay. Look at this design at the top. Which one looks below looks exactly like it? One. Look at this design at the top. Which one looks exactly like it? One. Okay, do it again. Look at this one at the top. Which one looks just like it? Five. Good. Look at this design at the top. Which one looks exactly like it? Four. Good. They're getting harder, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Look at the design at the top. Which one looks exactly like it? Um, four. Look at this design at the top. Which one looks exactly like it? Oh, <laughs> uh, Just make a guess if you're not sure. Two. Okay. Now look at this design at the top. Which one looks exactly like it? Three? No, I mean two. I mean two. Okay. I mean two. And finally, the last one. Look at the design at the top. Which one looks exactly like it? Say one. Okay. Nice. Now let's do something different. I'll show you a design for a few seconds and then you'll remember it and find it on another page. First, we'll practice. Look at this design for a few seconds and remember it. Okay. Which of these designs is the one that you just saw? Three. Okay. Do it again. Look at this design and remember it. Which of these designs is the one that you just saw? Two. Okay. Look at this design and remember it. Which of these designs is the one that you just saw? Three. Good. Look at this design and remember it. Which of these designs is the one that you just saw? One. Good. Okay. Look at this design and remember it. Which of these designs is the one that you just saw? Two. Good. A um, couple of things to remember when you're looking at score interpretation. You must determine, first of all, the child's chronological age prior to testing to determine the, uh, the norms to use uh, when scoring. Um, also, this assessment is going to generate several different types of scores to report performance, and they're going to be scaled, standard, and age equivalent scores. All of these scores uh, are of clinical interest and they're used in different ways. So after scoring TAG's assessment, I'm going to update his treatment plan and then uh, which will be shared at the next treatment session that we have together. Um, perception and cognition go hand in hand. Therefore, visual perce perceptual skills are an important factor in a child's academic success. Visual processing depends on that integration of several skills that are inseparable. Children who are having problems with visual perception may each present slightly differently in regard to the symptoms in different constellations of subtest scores. So it's important to remember that any one assessment will provide only limited information. So other sources of information such as behavioral observations and the child's medical history must also be taken into account prior to developing a treatment plan. So this concludes our demonstration. Thank you, Tag, for helping me today. Uh, and thank you for watching.